There are certain people who are filled with pessimism in our lives, and it is key to cut them out completely, or at least minimize their influence on us if we can't cut them out because, say, they are family, or they are very close friends, or they are co-workers. What are the signs of a pessimist? People who will continually bring you down and move you away from the spirit of your religion. I share with you maybe 10 or so signs. Look out for them. The first of them is that they are always very quick to criticize people. You can count on the pessimist to be the very first person to call out a problem. The quickest to criticize if something bad happens in their life or somebody else's life. Number two, they criticize everyone and everything. No one is spared from their finger of blame. Not the far, not the near, not the dear. Not the one on TV, the politicians, the scholars, the students of knowledge, the activists, the imams, the committee members, the weather, health, finance, economy. Everything is up for criticism. Also, they are wholesome in their criticism. They criticize everything. Even the optimists they criticize. They see the optimists as being annoying. Number three, they are always complaining. The pessimist is problems oriented. The optimist is super solutions oriented. There's always something to complain about health or finance or weather or politics or Islam or masjid. Always complaining, complaining, never presenting a solution. Number four, they're usually in a bad mood because they carry so much negativity inside of them. You rarely see them smiling, you rarely see them cracking a joke. They're usually grouchy and slouchy and generally unfriendly to be around. Number five, they hold lifelong grudges. They never let go. They never allow the pains of the past to wash away. If they've fallen out with someone, there is no such thing as forgive and forget. They will hold on to it for the rest of their lives. They will backstab. They will be filled with resentment. And they will use opportunities to exact the same pain that they once experienced. They hold lifelong grudges. Another one of their signs is that they are stuck in a rut. Because they have a non-progressive view on life, if they have bad habits, they will keep the bad habits. If they are using useless activities to fill their boring hours, next year you see them, they will be doing the exact same thing. They don't take any steps to remove themselves from their status into a better one, to learn a new craft, to learn a new trade, to learn a new skill, to network, to meet people, to go out of their comfort zone. They're stuck in the same place. You meet them today and you meet them after 10 years, they are the same people intellectually, physically, spiritually. They are the same people. They are stuck in a rut and that is a sign of pessimism that the status quo cannot be changed. Another one of their signs is that they have a self-depreciating value. They see themselves as unworthy. Whenever the people say that we see greatness in you, there is an opportunity, you have a skill, put it in this cause for the religion, for example. They say, what use is it? How is it going to benefit anyone? I can't add value to anyone's lives. A self-depreciating value. And one of the most salient signs of a pessimist is that they are always drawn to negativity. They are always thinking of the worst of a circumstance. There's always a reason why they can't do something or they shouldn't do something or they couldn't or they wouldn't. There's always a reason why somebody else has to do it, not themselves. They will only focus on the threats of an opportunity. They will not see its opportunity. They're always thinking about what the worst of a situation can be. Dwelling on the threats, not thinking about the opportunities. They are not risk takers. That is another sign of a pessimist. Again, we are mentioning these signs not to be judgmental, but just for you to be aware of what they look like so that you can minimize their influence on you. Because at this moment in time in your life, you don't need that. How do we foster optimism in our lives? I mentioned to you eight quick strategies in the few minutes that we have left. The first of them, surround yourself with optimistic people. So the optimists in your life, identify them, spend time with them, mix with them, observe them, hear how they speak, observe how they react to events, and you will notice patterns. Then adopt those patterns as your own. Where did the Sahaba learn their optimism? It's their companionship with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number two, remove the negative influences from your life. This point here is not just about cutting off negative people, pessimistic people. Cut out also the pessimistic things in your life. For example, excessive browsing through social media, how much more sewage and toxicity are we going to allow to be poured into our brains and our souls by this horrible media machine? All of it, or most of it at least, is negativity. Cut down on that. Or for example, cut down on the hours you spend watching the news. Yes, I understand you want to be informed, but you don't want to be overwhelmed. And as it stands, you and I will be overwhelmed by the negativity of news. Open up any news broadcast today, what will you find? The first story is always going to be a disaster a catastrophe. Someone died, something plummeted, someone was hurt. Why? Because man, by his nature, he is drawn to sudden disaster and we're not drawn to gradual improvement. That doesn't sell. It has to begin with a disaster. That's why the media adage says what? If it bleeds, it leads. And then if you put on top of that, our negativity bias, which the psychologists they speak about, we have, according to their studies, a negativity bias, which means that we are far more drawn to negative events and we remember them better than positive ones. 
So if you put that all together and you are constantly consuming excessive amounts of news, with time you will develop a skewed and imbalanced view of the world and you will become a pessimist. But it's not true. That doesn't represent the world. The journalists, they give you their stories by design because this is what sells. But then what happens? You think this is life? Bombs here and killing here and devastation here, poverty here. What type of world am I living in? What type of Lord am I worshipping? Someone may start to even doubt his Lord. But you realize that life is also filled with khair and goodness and charity and just causes that people are fighting and pursuing all around the world. Conscious souls, responsible souls, accountable souls. But these things they don't sell. Number three, isolate the event. The optimist, when he or she goes through a hard time, they will isolate it. Meaning, they will see it as an individual setback that is disconnected from other aspects of their life. So they say, we find a solution, we take consultation, we pray to Allah, we live and we move on and we find action. Whereas the pessimist will not do this. The pessimist will universalize that problem and he will see it as part of a much longer laundry list of failures in his or her life. And he will see it as part of many other problems in his or her life that are all connected and they are all overlapping. Isolate the event that you experience and see that it is disconnected from others. And remember the many other successes that Allah Almighty has given you in your life. And that's why our Prophet وسلم, he did not like those who universalize their problems. He said, if a person says, everyone is ruined, he said, he is the most ruined of them all. Don't universalize your problems, isolate the event. Number four, be a person of shukur, gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A potent antidote for those who want to become optimists. Study after study has compounded the fact that those who are grateful, they live longer, they have less illnesses, they make fewer visits to the doctor, they exercise more, they're less prone to depression, they are happier and they are far more optimistic as well. There are proven studies to show that people who do keep a gratitude journal and they write three to four things that they are grateful, in our case, to Allah Almighty for every morning, they live happier days and they live happier lives. Gratitude to Allah cultivates optimism. Number five, doubt your doubts. When you doubt something, an event or a circumstance in your life, and you feel down, ask yourself the question, is this based upon evidence? What evidence do I have that supports how I am feeling now as a pessimist? And here's an exercise for you, my brother and my sister. Think about the last tragedy that you experienced or someone whom you love experienced in their lives. Take note of it in your mind now. Then think about a second thing. How long did it take for that tragedy to pass? Quantify it, put a number, months, years. And then what you realize is that it eventually did pass and all of the mess was cleared up by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and things became all right again. And then number three, think about the voices of pessimism that you heard during that tragedy. Think about how family were talking. Think about what your friends said to you. Think about how the pessimist advised you. And you will realize that much of what they said never actually materialized. It didn't happen. So if you are going through a negative experience in your life, and you're feeling pessimistic, you're about to despair, ask yourself, is this founded upon any evidence? Number six, control your reactions and responses. You may not have control over the events that come your way in life, but you know what you do control? You and I control our responses and our reactions. And here you had a psychologist by the name of Betty Phillips. And she says that people think that happy people are just blessed and lucky and fortunate, and that the grass is always somehow greener for them. She said that's incorrect. She said science has shown that for both happy and unhappy people, they experience the exact same number of adverse conditions in their life. The only difference between a happy and unhappy person is the way they interpret those events. The optimist sees that hardship as an opportunity for growth to push him out of his comfort zone and to see it as new opportunities in life. And so they create an action plan. Whereas the pessimist, the way they react to the negative experience is that they do nothing and they continue to spiral down in negativity, lethargy, laziness, and even depression. Depression, she said. So the grass is not necessarily greener for the happy people. It's all about how they interpret the events. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ told us to control our reactions and responses. We were never told to control events. He said, if you are touched by any hardship in your life, don't say, oh, I wish that I did such and such. Instead, you should say, this is the decree of Allah and whatever he decrees, he's free to do it. He said, because when you say, if only, that will open up the gateways for shaitan. So you may not be able to control the events in your life, but you know what you can control you are able to control your responses, your reactions. Number seven, don't ask the question of why this is happening to me. Ask yourself the question, why is this happening for me? As a believer in Allah, you know that any hardship that comes your way is for your health and benefit and growth. And you remember the story of the believer from Surah Yasin, when his community wanted to kill him for supporting the messengers. What did he say to them? If the most merciful wants hardship for me, none of your idols can save me. What did he say? 
in one sentence you say if the most merciful wants hardship for me can the most merciful want hardship for you yes because sometimes the most merciful will give you mercy through hardship hardship comes your way purification of sins the raising of rank the purifying of soul the opening up of opportunity so ask yourself the question reframe it reword it why this is happening to me no why this is happening for me and optimism will grow in your life number eight to cultivate optimism is to be a realist as muslims our understanding of optimism is not everything is going to be just fine and okay no being an optimist as a muslim is not about putting on rosy colored glasses seeing everything as colorful when it's not being an optimist is to expect sometimes that there can be hardships along the way so that you're not taken by surprise when they do come this is the nature of dunya hardship a difficulty in jannah you will rest part of being an optimist is to be a realist jabir he said i came into the room of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam three days before he died and i heard him say some of his last words none of you should die except in a state where you are thinking well of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask yourself the question, what has hopelessness and despair and pessimism ever done for you or anyone else? Has it ever helped you fill out a job application? Has it ever helped you find a job promotion? Has it ever cured you from an illness? Has it ever helped you recover from any pain? Has it helped you solve a marital discord between you and your spouse? What has hopelessness and despair ever done for you or anyone else? It's brought you and I nothing but misery and loss and suffering. And by our nature, as intelligent human beings, we make the decision to cut out the miserable things and the miserable concept and the miserable ideas from our lives and pessimism has to be the first of those things think well of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be optimistic and instead of saying oh Allah I have a burden that is great why don't we say oh burden I have a Lord who is great